Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, <coughs> acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, when you are going to study this verse closely, starting from verse 2 and going up, you will be able to discover in the Spirit that to know God's perfect will is that you have to renew your mind. Amen. Okay? What is that good? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To know God's perfect will, you have to renew your mind. And to renew our mind, we have to get out of our present thinking mind and we have to identify to the mind of the Christ that is within. Now, to renew our mind also, if you are going to go up, you cannot renew your mind if you are going to conform to the pattern of this world. Okay, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we'll go up again, a little bit higher. You cannot renew your mind if you will not offer your body as a living sacrifice unto God. Traditional teaching is encouraging us to give our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the Bible? Kung saan mo na niyang heart na to? Hindi hindi man na siya kaliwan. Kung saan mo na niyang heart na to? Hindi man sa satanism. Hang yang gusto our body. You can give your heart to God, but your body belongs to your thinking mind. What is very important is that we have to give our bodies to God. We have to sanctify our body. We have to offer it in the altar of God and let the fire of the Spirit consume it to the point that our minds will be renewed. Once our minds will be renewed, then we will be able to know God's perfect will. God's perfect will includes the leadings of God, it includes the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it includes godly intuition, it includes sharp discernment, it includes the activation of your spiritual senses within you that you will be able to hear God's voice clearly. So this body is very important. We have to offer this to God, we have to see this body as sacred. Why? Because we have given by God a body so that He Himself that dwells within will be expressed. God in us will be fully demonstrated in our lives. Hindi lang kaya nga itong heart mo yung gusto, but your whole body. So once we will give our body to God and put it in the altar of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit will consume it. And people will be able to see a transformed life in you. People will be able to see the glory of God manifesting in your life. Now once that light is shining within, that light is the understanding of God, spiritually speaking. And that understanding of God that is shining in us, it includes the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and people will come into your life. That is the right way to evangelize people. We have to attract them. It's the other way around 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Most people are chasing people for them to evangelize about the love of God. I'm not saying that we are not going to share about the love of God or evangelize people. It's given the chance to share and to preach the word of God. But what is very important is that our life is like a flower that it will attract bees. But once our body will radiate with the light of God, Meaning to say, your mind is, a, is dwelling on a higher level. You are no longer dwelling on the level of your mind where all of your problems are created, but you are living and dwelling above your natural mind. To get out of our natural mind is to identify to the mind of the Christ that is within. Wisdom, knowledge, leadings, and guidance, spontaneous decisions 
will start to flow in us. But it all begins when you submit your body to God. Especially young people. You have to shun away from fornication. You have to treat your body as holy in the sight of God. Sacred in the sight of God. Or else, you will suffer. God is love. Yes, that's true. But what we sow, we will always reap it. So this body is very important. Now in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every, and bringing into captivity every thought, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Christ. Verse 6, and having in a readiness, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Traditionally thinking, we think that obedience includes action. Yes, it's true. But it lacks something. Most Pentecostal preachers or Pentecostal Christians, they think that obedience involves action or it involves doing. But if that is the only understanding that we have about obedience, then we miss the very important thing about obedience. Obedience is not only in the doing. Obedience is to be established in your being. Meaning to say, obedience must be established within. It needs, we need to yield to the Spirit of God within us that will spark and bring transformation in our lives. So we cannot punish all disobedience outside. Not unless obedience inside will be established. So it needs to be established first within. So for us to renew our mind, We do not need to conform to this world. Why? Because if you conform to the pattern of this world, you will not be able to get the leadings and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, we must remember that we have to submit our body to God. Now, once this body is submitted to God, meaning to say, we have to exercise dominion over this body. We have to exercise dominion over this body. Now, first, before you can exercise dominion to this body, you have to realize that you are not your body. Okay? The first thing that we need to realize before we can exercise dominion to this body is we have to know that we are not this body. We are not our minds. But we are the spirit that lives within. Using this mind and using this body. But people who are not experiencing a mighty transformation from the Holy Spirit, they are experiencing the other way around. Instead of using their mind, they are now being used by their minds. Instead of using this body for the purposes of God, they are now yielding themselves to the cravings of this body. So before we can punish all disobedience outside, Obedience within must be established. The most important thing that we need to exercise dominion within is our emotions. Once you can tame your emotions, you can stop all blind reaction. You can stop all unconscious actions. The problem is, our minds, our consciousness is too attached to our body. Our consciousness, our minds is so attached to the physical material world. Whenever we hear something that is not right according to what we, we believe, we react right away. Why? Because you are one with your mind. You are one with your body. No awareness within. No awareness within. All your awareness is caught up outside. All your observation is outside. Your observation is not within. But the moment you submit this body unto God, He will give us the wisdom how to exercise rule over this body. 
Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, the impartation of God's word, the impartation of God's word in our minds, in our consciousness right now, it will help us to discern what is inside our minds. It will help us to discern what is inside our emotions, what is happening within us emotionally right now. So we will be able to see a set of standards established in our mind through the impartation of the word. Now once the word is imparted within us, an awareness is awakened. The awareness or the consciousness of the Christ is awakened within. Now once that awakening of the Christ within is taking place, the awakening of the consciousness of the Christ within, you are now starting to observe yourself within. When you hear something outside, there is an emotion that will cause you to react. But oops! Another thing is restricting you within. Why? Because there is an awareness within you that is observing all the behaviors of your thinking mind. There is an awareness within you that is obser observing your emotions. That is running unobserved most of the time. That, my friend, that, my brothers and sisters, is what I call dominion. Activated Christ within. It's the consciousness of the Christ that is activated within. It's who you are. It's your true identity. Now, the impartation of the Word of God within us will cause, will set a demarcation line that is what of the flesh and what is of the spirit. And you will start to see who you are in the flesh before and who you are right now in the spirit. So when you start to see that who you are in the flesh is not who you are in the spirit, you will start to realize and you will start to experience dominion right now. Now all of these things was revealed by the Holy Spirit to me when I was crying to God. I failed God so many times. I even reached to the point that, Lord, I said to my father, Father God, if you're not going to intervene in my condition, I will quit what I am doing right now. As a son of God or as a man of God, you are prone to all accusation. You are prone to all temptation. And if you cannot exercise dominion within, if you do not know how to use your mind, your mind will use you and later on. Wala nas manoy, tagap na. Why? Because of ignorance. Because of ignorance. No, the word, when, we, when it is being received within, imparted within, that thought will expand. Another impartation will enter, and that thought will expand. Now, first, we have to remember that words are thoughts expressed in the level of speech. We have to know that words are thoughts expressed in the level of speech, expressed in the form of speech. So before you spoke that word, before you release that word, you entertain it in your head. Now, in the first place, we are not created by God as limited being. We are created by God in His own image and likeness as unlimited spirit beings. We are like God. We bear His image and likeness. When you flow in the spirit, when God sees you, He sees Himself. When a man also is flowing in the spirit, when he sees his father, he sees himself. No separation. Now, when you reach that level, when we reach that level, and I do believe, there are some of you right now who has, who has reached that level, that we can exercise dominion to this body. This body is not designed by God to die. What is designed to die? 
within you, you are immortal. Our true identity is immortal. May tapos tao na matay. Why? Because we created another identity. We create another identity in our minds. And that another identity that we create in our mind is mortal. Kana siya mo kinahanglang mamatay. Kaya kung mamatay na lang siya, who you are within will start to emerge. Who you are within will start to emerge. The being of God will start to emerge within. And people outside will see the beauty of the Christ. People outside, they will be able to see your light shining and people will come unto your light. Isaiah 60. Nations will come unto your light. When the Christ of God is lifted up within, the word says, I will draw all men unto me. That is one of the most powerful evangelism in this 21st century. Unahalang yung transformation? Unahalang? Ayaw problemahang transformation sa imong asawa o sa imong bana. Kaya nahitabo mong gudaan eh. Nagtutod. Ngayon ang, ngayon ang husband. This house will be heaven and earth if my wife will be transformed. Ngayon sa dang husband. Ngayon sa dang wife. Kung matransform lang niya akong husband, hamong balay, mahimuli heaven and earth. In other words, why gusto matransform? Na naman, nagtutod, kinsay mausap. Ikaw mo ay kinahanglan mausap. Ingon sa dayong usap. Ikaw mo ay kinahanglan mausap. Why gusto mo usap? Forget about their transformation. See to it that you are grounded in the truth of God that is within. Now, once you submit to the word that is imparted by the Spirit of God this morning within our minds, once we submit to the thought imparted in our minds, that is very powerful. I will show to you in the scriptures that the law of attraction Nana's Bible. Laws of Attraction, James 1. James 1 verse, uh, chapter 1 verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted with God. I am tempted with God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. 14. But every man is tempted. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Meaning to say, you will not be tempted if the thing that you are thinking is not inside. You are entertaining it first within before you experience temptation. So meaning to say, what is happening with it outside resonates within. Ay sulti imo hasban ang imong wife nga gitintan ng kukulugawa yun eh. Di natukso lang ko. Nasaong manaki mong kuku. So what is happening outside resonates within. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Verse 14, uh, 15, Then when lust hath conceived, bring it forth sin. When lust is conceived in your mind, or meaning to say when lust is entertained in your mind, when you keep on thinking about lust, it will bring forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Meaning to say, what you think is what you get. It's a law of attraction. What you think is what you get. It's a universal principle backed up by the Word of God. It's very dangerous if you do not know how to change your mind. It's very dangerous if you do not know how to cast down your thoughts. Casting down imagination, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We have to cast down imagination, bring into captivity all the thoughts that is ungodly, that is within us, into submission of the Christ. We have to submit it to the Christ that is within us, so that the thoughts of the Holy Spirit will govern our minds. So when you are thinking about righteousness, when you are thinking about peace, it will result in obedience inside and out. When you are thinking, conceiving, entertaining about breakthrough in 
your mind, wherever you go, you will always attract breakthrough. The very reason why people are not attracting success in life, why? Because there is no success established within. So wherever you go, why ni resonate sa soon? Pero kung naigani mo resonate sa soon ni mo, kaparehas yun yung frequency, the frequency is the same, then you will attract it. Spiritual principles, oh. What quantum physics has discovered nowadays is in the Bible. It's what I call the law of sin and death. The reverse of that one is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now God has teach us how not to think. After we learn how not to think, God is teaching us right now how to think. Why? Because we are still living in this body. If you are living, if you are still living in this body, we need to learn. If you are still living in this physical material realm, we need to learn how to think properly according to God's perfect will. But every decision, every insight, it comes not from your thinking mind. It comes from the awareness. It comes from the consciousness of the Spirit of God that is within us and it will start to flow. Then you will start to realize that you know that you know that you know. When somebody confronts you, saying to you, but how do you know that it's the voice of God? You cannot explain it. But you know deep within you that it's the voice of God. Did it come from your thinking mind? It comes from the awareness of God that is within us. So that impartation of word within, when you are going to dwell on that thought imparted right now by the Spirit of God, when we are going to entertain that thought imparted in our minds right now, later on that thought will expand. It will attract its relative thoughts to the point that you will start to begin to speak about those thoughts imparted by the Spirit of God that is within you later on, not only that you are going to speak it, but you will be motivated to act. Now, when you are motivated to act on the dominating thoughts in your mind, then your experience will start to flow according to what you speak and according to what you think. That can only happen when you are going to submit your body to God. That can only, ha that can only be materialized when we are going to exercise dominion in this body right now. And we have to be very careful. We have to ma watch our emotions properly. Why? Because emotions is a very powerful indicator. It will help us indicate what kind of thoughts that we are entertaining in our head. If we are feeling down, if you feel depressed, why? Because you are entertaining something that is not beneficial to what you are doing right now. Because you are thinking in a very different way. Maybe you are beholding things of the flesh. But if you are going to behold God, it will give you the right thoughts. Once you are given by the Holy Spirit the right thought, then it will produce the right feelings. So it is very important to exercise dominion to what you feel. Why? Because we cannot easily exercise dominion to our thinking mind because every day grabe according to science no pusod sa mong o every day sobra pa 100,000 thoughts or million thoughts mo sa mong o and it flows every day and notice so the best way to check what you are thinking is to know what you feel I repeat, the best way to check what you are thinking, what you are entertaining, is to check what you feel right now. If you feel the joy of the Spirit of God, if you feel the peace of God, then you are in the right track. You are in the right track. The thoughts of God is established in our mind. And then when you need decisions in life, wisdom will start to overflow. Now first, when you want to know God's will, you have to renew your mind. If you want to renew your mind, don't conform to the pattern of this world. If you want to renew your mind, you have to give God your body. You have to offer your body as a living sacrifice in the sight of God. Put it in the altar of God. Let the fire of the Spirit of God consume it. Now, by allowing the fire of the Holy Spirit to consume your body, meaning to say, you are exercising dominion to your emotions. 
By exercising dominion to your emotions, you were able to exercise dominion over your mind. By exercising dominion over your mind, you were able to exercise dominion to your speech. By exercising dominion over your speech, you were able to exercise dominion to your actions. So simple. The word is so simple. It is being simplified by the Holy Spirit this morning. Brothers and sisters, God's message this morning is so simple. For you to know God's will, treat your body as sacred. Offer it in the altar of God and let the fire of the Spirit consume it. Let us all stand in the presence of God. Father, by your grace this morning and by your power, we yield our bodies right now. Everything that is within us, we surrender it to you. All that we have right now, Father, we yield it all completely to you, Father. We put our bodies right now into your altar, Father. And we allow the fire of your Spirit to consume this body. The people, Father God, will see us burning in the Spirit at all times. Father, thank you that you take full control over this body and help us, Father God, to exercise dominion over this body, over these emotions, over this mind. Father, thank you that you renew our minds. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of your perfect will and divine purposes. Thank you very much, Father God, for your insights that is flowing right now, even as we go home right now. Father, thank you that your revelation knowledge your wisdom, your understanding, the discernment of your spirit activated within and it is flowing abundantly in our consciousness right now, elevating us from one realm of glory to another realm of glory. And now I declare peace. I declare joy. I speak life and release light right now. I release prosperity and declare deeper transformation, Father to be imparted to my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Father, that you flow in us mightily and cause us to tap to the inner sources within us that your life will be personified, that the Christ within will be seen wherever we go. And people will come unto us. People will come to the light shining within us because we are the light of this world. We are so thankful today that you have caused us to realize that we are blessed. We bless you and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen.